Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I'm gonna do an alcohol ink piece, which I know that's not so different, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side kind of comparison between alcohol inks versus alcohol dyes. Now, I know both of them already know just from working with them, they're already gonna behave a little bit differently. So I wanted to talk to you about it a little bit and then show you a little bit. So Pinata Alcohol Ink by Jacquard is a very popular alcohol ink. They're great colors. They're very highly saturated as far as very rich colors and bold. Uh, I love using them a lot because of colors get me excited. Okay. That's just, that's my weakness with art. That's what inspires me is colors. So I love playing with the colors. However, they're not light fast. So strong uh, rays of sunlight makes them fade pretty quickly. Uh, in combination with resin and using different epoxy products and all that and if you do them on countertops or anything like that that's a problem especially if anything's under a big window so I started messing around with alcohol dyes and I use the aluminite dye product which is also meant to go into resin and I create kind of an alcohol ink now granted super super concentrated stuff so you put about four drops of color into a little needle applicator bottle like this full of 91% alcohol. Uh, don't go much more than that because too much of a concentrated bit of the dye, it won't dry on your board. Uh, we can apply more and build it up gradually and slowly to try to get to the brightness you want, but you can't add too much to your bottle. So I'm gonna work with basic kind of rainbowish colors. I've got a magenta, a blue, and a yellow over here. And the closest I can do with this one is uh, I've got just the basic Illumi Illumilite blue, uh, four drops of it straight on, uh, red, and then the yellow on that one. So, and then on the pinata side, uh, it's a sapphire blue, uh, senorita magenta, and then the sun bright yellow. So we're gonna do these side by side. And I might add uh, a little bit of black in the vein in the black. That I'm going to use um, is a Ranger pitch black. I just like this particular black. I'm still messing with trying to mix up a nice black with the Illumilite dyes that's close to this, but in the meantime, that's what I'm using. Okay, now I got to get started. So, what I normally do with clear marble, which I'm still not used to saying, <laughs> is it's almost like a marble technique where there's a bit of a vein in there and usually a couple off branches of veins and a buildup of colors in the middle. So I'm still going to do this same kind of technique with the three colors with uh, a little bit of black in there to add a little bit of pop of contrast. So if I do apply a gold, I'll make sure that I do it on both sides. Now the gold that I'm using will be another pinata brass. Now I like using the brass because it floats on the surface and it gives those little sparkle bits of, um, really it looks like gold so let's just say if I'm referring to gold is the pinata brass um, so lovely color on that part and then what I will do with that just to give you some information um, if you've ever messed with metallic colors especially like in epoxies or any other kind of uh, painting uh, acrylics or alcohol inks and all that metallics can take over really quickly so one of the things that I do do is um, I'll fill up the bottle here, shake this up really good, uh, add about, oh, about a third of the bottle of the brass, and then fill up the remainder with alcohol. So it's already pre-diluted. So when I apply it, I know I'm not gonna get too much and the colors are still gonna sing. So that's it's kind of a way to, you know, give myself a guarantee I'm not gonna screw it up. Okay, now I gotta get started. Okay, I'm gonna do the pinata one first. And I'm just gonna run a line of 91% alcohol just to get the colors to float and fly my colors and start moving. All right, I'm gonna do a little double. Yeah, probably so. I'm always iffy on, do I wanna do gold when I first start talking and I always end up adding it. So it's like, just go with it. I may not have to add the black to this. Whoop. Sorry, getting pretty dark. So usually with my clear marble, I throw some color down, just start it 
to move it around just to lay it in position and then however it dries then I start to work with it some more and I'm using my uh, hair dryer as a brush so I move my inks here to this side or that side with the direction of the airflow. Now the alcohol is already starting to evaporate because the ink's moving a little bit slower. Alright, you know what? I think I'm going to try this and just not add the black and see, you know, as close as you, we can get to apples to apples comparison I think will be best. Alright, so I do use the larger versions of the Neil applicator bottles for my uh, alcohol and this just helps me um, apply alcohol where I want it. I'm going to add it right on this edge here and I'm going to kind of feather this out a bit. I'm going to dance it around a little bit from side to side just to reactivate the colors that are on the edges and it creates a nice blend. And then we'll go back if I need to. Now when you apply the alcohol, if you haven't used alcohol dyes before, it reactivates the colors underneath and they will continue to move. So even though I have a buildup of a lot of colors, sometimes adding the alcohol, you'll bring out some of the tones. You'll see some blues come out and some pinks come out. Sometimes they do blend and create a new color, but sometimes they do separate. So I'm gonna do a little bit more over here. Just kind of push it into the color a little bit and then move it down the side. Okay, my daddy just called and you got to get the phone call when it's your daddy. So I'm going to reactivate these colors and get them moving again. And you can see the colors start to reactivate and move into the alcohol. So uh, I wasn't happy with that blend, so by reactivating it and feathering it out and feathering it back in, it gives a prettier blend and I'm happy with that. Alright, so let's see what we can do with this. With that movement so much, it's probably going to stain the, have stained the board a little bit like this. But that's okay. We'll make it work. Sometimes at this level, I will add another color just to get to blend in a little bit more. There's so much red over here that I want a little bit of purple. So I add a little bit of the um, sapphire blue. So dad just called. We had a heck of a rainstorm last night, like thunder that shook the house kind of rainstorm and I'm not exaggerating. And uh, they're just now getting out for dinner and they got to dinner kind of early in the day I mean it's like three three o'clock my time and they uh, were leaving the neighborhood and uh, mama spotted a couple deer what well, ended up being just a couple of deer turned out to be about seven deer so they probably had a rough time last night with all that rain we probably I wouldn't be surprised if we got about two inches of rain it was pretty intense so you see there we got some brown tones coming in probably with all three of those colors blending together and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a line of gold through this and work this up and down and it's going to pick up some of those colors and move them with the gold or the brass color and by starting at this end and coming down it's going to give a really dark vein right through the middle of it. Alright, now that I've got that going on in there, I'm going to add a little bit of color and a little bit of the brass over here just to have a little bit of motion in this corner. very very bright bold piece but I wanted it to convey the differences between the colors and the different products so it wasn't that one was better than the other it was just a just a comparison Alright, 
since this is paper, a lot of times at the edge, it'll kind of catch the ink and you can see it running down here. Um, I'll try to put paper underneath it to try to encourage it to drip over. But what I'll usually end up doing is like trimming off a little bit on the sides there. So, okay, that one's done. Now I'm gonna go do the second one. Okay, I'm gonna start working with the alumilite dies. And those, always give them a good shake. In fact, I even put a little BB in my uh, bottles here to make it e easier for mixing. The solution for alumilite dyes is really, really thick. It just helps it have that mixing capability by doing the bottle in there. Just like paint. So try to go through the same process again. I try and lay it out similar. Don't know if I'm going to succeed. So you're already seeing probably a difference with the colors already and even how the colors will mix will be different too. So already right there, you're not getting that black that was starting to show up. Do a little line of gold brass. Now the other thing that is different, well, I shouldn't say different because the Pinata will do it too. Um, is there's a lot of let me stop here so I can talk. When it touches the surface, like you've seen the drops here of the yellow or even the red, the aluminite does seem to go to the surface and bond with the board quickly. So if you can get the alcohol down and get it start to move quickly, it won't adhere as strongly so that you have this nice little circle drop. So in here, I don't know if it's gonna leave the yellow spot or not, we'll have to see. And these definitely mixed a lot more than the other ones did. There's a not a nice black in here. We got kind of some muddy browns in here. All right, I'm just gonna pull my dryer back a little bit and just try to get it to dry for the most part. So that way I'm not continuously mixing it. Whoops! And let it run away. Stay. What I usually do when I start building up my colors is I'll run a line of alcohol, give it a quickie shake, and I'm just, remember, I'm just trying to build up my colors. And you can see how the aluminite dye responds a little bit differently than the alcohol inks. It'll make deposits of the dye on the edges there. And it seems to happen a lot. That's all right, it's just the way it behaves. It's like any painter or artist, you know, you go into paint with acrylics or watercolor or, or gouache or oils. Everything has its own little characteristic. So you got a little bit more of a saturation of the reds building up. A little bit more color. Do a little yellow in here. And yes, I spilled the yellow, sorry. Backing up just so I can get it to dry a little bit better. Wherever it is wet from the alcohol or the color, I will back it, go back and forth and rock in that area until it dries like I like it. This piece is already looking dramatically different from the other piece. Now I'm going to run a line of alcohol on the sides, kind of soften those edges, and move it this way and that way. And this can get a buildup of colors where you start to bring in your real dark tones in here. It can be really pretty. So when I first applied it, uh, the alcohol and they started moving the colors, you started getting some areas that like were almost devoid of color. It was like the ink was having a hard time grabbing. I just keep on working the alcohol 
and the dye over that area and eventually it starts making deposits again and softening up instead of looking like globules or something that wasn't pretty. And that seems to be a characteristic of the alumilite dyes. So just keep on pushing through it and going back and forth and eventually it's going to look really, really pretty. Go back and I'm finding it goes to a point. I like to run the point next to a line. I think it looks prettier, but that's just me. Each piece is gonna be different because there's just too many factors to control. All right, these two look very different. All right, side by side, these guys look very, very different. Now this, I love for an art piece. Oh, to be honest with you, I would love this on my countertops, but I also like the fact that I'm able to get what I would consider more natural tones, more visually appealing colors for something to integrate with stone or interior design with the Illumilite dyes. So each one of them, I think, have their place. I mean, the browns in here and the greens in here are very, what I would consider very natural looking colors. Uh, even you saw the red build up and it built up with the brown and even though they mix together and they create a mud The mud color itself is actually really really pretty uh, And on top of the brass So they both did really really nicely with the brass, but behaved a little bit differently um, Both of these I would recommend doing some kind of spray sealer either a matte clear coat or an archival spray. Now I realize archival sprays right now are hard to find, but you definitely want to spray them, uh, seal them before you move on to resin or however else you want to finish that. If you have a huge amount of accumulation of colors, like right here is starting to get dark, and this area is starting to get dark, if you find after about a couple hours and letting it dry, it's still, like you're still picking up colors either on your finger or if you put a paper towel over it gently and you come up with a lot of color, just bat it with a paper towel, pick up some of the color, not all of it, but just some of it, and then go ahead and spray seal it because on countertop application, you're gonna be embedding this into epoxy. And these products, the Illumilite dyes, are meant to go with epoxy, so it'll be just fine. And what it does is the, um, the barrier of the spray sealant between the uh, alcohol ink or this application and the flood coat is enough to keep the color to stay put but not enough to dye your epoxy ab above it so you're kind of making a sandwich of the uh, spray sealer between the epoxy layer and your color layer but yeah so that's kind of the difference between alcohol inks and alcohol dyes. I don't want you guys thinking that if you get a blue color, you're going to get those kind of blues because you're not. You're going to get more of a washed out blue or even the same thing with the uh, magenta. The intensity is not going to be there, but you're still able to get really gorgeous pieces. And I have used combinations of both before and even a bunch of other products you know me i'm not afraid to, to combine different products and doing that you can get some gorgeous stuff thanks for hanging out with me while we explore these two different products and kind of i don't want to say the pros and cons but the, just the differences in what they bring to your art pieces so whether you're an artist or you're a countertop person you're still an artist you're still being creative and um, bringing a piece of art into your clients or customers home so you need to know what the medium can do and that's what it can do and more info on that medium is i am working really hard to put together recipe books that show different formulas for mixing that a little more like dye alcohol dyes for yourself so again thanks for hanging out there you go